y'all. What do you think? How do they look? I'm pretty excited. We've got them all set up. We had to freeze all the frames to kill any of the wax moth that was in it. Um, there was just a little bit of ribboning in some of them where you could see the webbing had tunnels where the active larvae were last year. But after a good freeze, they should be good to go. And most of them looked pretty good. So I'm feeling pretty confident that we won't have that issue again. And when we get our nukes, which is going to be very soon, we are ready to go. We just have to wait and see. I set them up now so that if I have to move them a little bit to get better lighting, I can. You see there's already a little bit of shade coming in on that one from the trees on that side. But as the sun goes over, I think it's going to get pretty good light. So we want a good amount of sunlight for our hives. You don't want them to be in the shade but they are on a large piece of cardboard. So if I have to move, there's cardboard under all that hay. That hay was some waste hay we bought from the store that was not for consumption. <laughs> so we got a refund or a replacement bale and just use this as a mulch around so that when it comes time to mowing and weed eating around the hives, we won't have to get too awful close. I am thinking about planting some pretty flowers and stuff around them, but we'll see. I'm not sure quite what I want to do with that yet. But I just can't wait for my baby bees. All right, you know the old saying, better late than never? Well, that's how I'm operating with my tomatoes this year. I was having an awful time deciding. I knew I needed to get my peppers and eggplants started before my tomatoes. Tomatoes are one of those things that, yes, you should start six to eight weeks before you plant. But if you don't get them started six to eight weeks before you plant outside after frost, it's not that big of a deal because tomatoes catch up very quick. The seedlings grow very fast. And I have found that the smaller the seedling is when I plant it out into the garden, the quicker it catches up and produces fruit. I know that that doesn't make sense or sound like a logical thing, but it has proven year after year after year that the younger the seedling, the better it does when I transplant. The bigger, older seedlings that I've used have always struggled. And I think a big part of it is that they were getting cozy and used to being in pampered environment. And when you switch them to the outdoor setting, that's not a pampered environment anymore. And so they have a lot of catching up to do. Even if you've transitioned properly, like I demonstrated in a previous gardening video, they still have catching up to do. So basically, I'm super late planting my tomatoes. I usually plant them at least three weeks ago. But not to worry, I've got good conditions in here for them to grow. I've got the heating mat, got the lights, and that's another thing. The amount of space I have under these lights is running out. I've already got maximum capacity under my lights, so these colder weather plants, like the brassicas, are gonna need to get put outside anyway. So getting them a good healthy start under the light before they go out into the mini greenhouse and they have a nice healthy start on warm conditions is going to be beneficial for them and then I'll have room to put my tomatoes as they emerge from the soil. So today I'm planting my tomatoes. I have no idea how many tomatoes I'm planting. I have no idea how many species I have chosen because I chose too many and that was part of the reason why I was having a hard time getting out here and planting them because I had to sit down and go through all my tomato seeds. This is a bunch of tiny little seed bags of tomatoes, all different kinds that I've saved over the years and I have gotten from seed swaps. And these are all of my purchased tomatoes from Baker Creek and, and my gardener. And Mary's heirloom seed was nice enough to send us some seed to try out this year in our garden. So we're doing her green zebra. I already have some green zebra of my own that I've saved, but you know, they're 
can never be too many tomatoes and it's kind of nice to see what other people get in their seeds that they save. So I'm going to start with these and work my way over to these. So I'm going to start with my Baker Creek, I think. Oh, this is so hard. It's been really difficult for me to narrow it down and make some decisions. So now is time to plant. I just got to get it done and get it over with. So wish me luck. So I'm writing down each variety that I'm growing and I am doing one per row. So I have these, these cells here and I'm just going to do single rows of each kind. So we'll get a little bit of a variety of everything. Yeah, eight per row. So that'll be good. And I'm going to go ahead and put about two seeds per cell. Tomatoes, I have found, germinate extremely easily and almost 100% germination on any tomatoes I've ever had. So I'm not needing to sprinkle a bunch of seeds in there. Just two seeds will be plenty just in case one of them doesn't make it. All right, I may have accidentally put more than two in some of those cells, but we will see what comes up. And this is good because if, if I don't have good germination in one of them, I can easily identify that and go ahead and sow more the next time. Oh, I almost forgot. I finally got my washi tape. So I had this suggestion made from another YouTuber, Jess over at Roots and Refuge, that she uses washi tape. It's, I guess, usually used in scrapbooking. I'd never heard of it until she mentioned it, but it's a resealable tape. Anyway, so these were ordered on Amazon like a month ago, but I guess they were coming from China or Amazon forgot about them or something because it took them a long time to get here. So I got a multi-pack of all different patterns. They're really cute, actually. But the nice thing is, is I can tape close my seed packets and next season I can just open it back up and tape again. It reseals after being opened and closed. And uh, it's got a pretty little floral pattern on it. So I'm super excited about that. So thank you, Jess, at Roots and Refuge for that wonderful idea. As I go, I'm writing down every variety and I need to label every variety as well. Where did that grease pencil go? For those of you that didn't hear my tip on writing on labels in a previous video, grease pencils are the best thing. They don't come off the labels. So grease pencils, they're really very, very helpful. So we are going to write the name of that one is Brad's Atomic or Atomic Cherry uh, Grape. I can't talk today. Cherry Orange. <laughs> Brad's Atomic Grape. I'm super excited about the colors in that one. I can't wait to try it. I've also heard it's very delicious. So that makes it a win-win. I'm going to do some Amon Orange. I'm on an orange are the ones that I planted the year that we won the biggest tomato in um, our local farmer's market. So that's one that gets pretty big for us. So that's a mana orange. And we're going to label it. All right, so yesterday I got one tray done and now I just finished another tray of seedlings for tomatoes and it's time to go in for lunch again. <laughs> so it looks like we'll be getting one tray done per day, which is okay. That's better than nothing. And you know what? Late is better than never, like I said. So we've got the tomato tray. I just watered it in heavily. So I want to make sure that it stays out here dripping until tonight when we bring it in and put it on the heat mat. We have our brassicas hardening off and I had to water that 
um, tray of moringa plants really well because it was starting to dry out more so than it normally does. As you can see, we've already got moringa coming up. Those white shoulders are moringa seedlings. I've got some weeds coming up in it too because this was actually a batch of seed mix that I reused from the greenhouse that Ryan works at. So you can see the citrus is coming up too. We've got those coming out of the ground. So this tray also needs to be on the heat still. So we're gonna bring that back in before it gets cold tonight. And the boys' seedlings were kind of struggling this morning. So we put them out here to get them some water and fresh air. And then while I was seeding tomatoes, Liam insisted that he plant his own. So he planted those all by himself. All I did was pour the seed into his hand. He did everything else. He filled the soil, he watered them. Um, I wrote the labels for him, but he insisted I do that as well. <laughs> He's such a good gardener. What are you doing? I see I'm going to water these things over here and over here. You're watering the wood? <laughs> no, I could water these plants over here and over here. Oh, you're watering the creeping Charlie. Thanks, bud. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Such a sweet boy. You can see we've got a bed started here. I'm thinking we're probably going to continue doing a little bit of bed space along this side of the driveway to the barn because we're going to run out of room in the big garden to plant all these tomatoes. So we're going to try to be wise in our space saving ideas like growing along the fence and planting out in other places. So we shall see. Kitty. How you doing? Kitty's due date is today. And when I checked her ligaments this morning when everybody was getting their breakfast, they were still very tight. So I wasn't too worried, but then I noticed she was just laying here all by herself, not letting anybody come close to her. Which I guess can just be cranky late pregnancy symptoms. Oh, she's humming. I just heard her making noise. So she's talking to the babies. We might be getting closer now than we were when I checked her this morning. So today is her due date. Goats are like humans. Humans can go two weeks before, two weeks after. You know, a due date is just a guesstimation. With goats, they can go five days before, five days after, without being abnormal, you know. So, I wanna check her ligaments again, but I don't wanna disturb her if she's just resting before the oncoming hard labor. I wanna let her have her rest. The bottom of our hay basket, not hay basket, but our big wooden box that we store our hay in had some alfalfa that had fallen off of hay bales you know and so I scooped it all up and put it in these buckets for the goats to have a little bit of alfalfa and it looks like they like it <laughs> they don't like the Bermuda as much oh you got in here I was talking about alfalfa hay and you were just being a ninja is that what Trisha would say yeah that I am a big boy. You are a big boy. <laughs> well, let's go check Kitty. Now, you don't go running up to her and scaring her. She's resting hop, right hop, now. Hop, hop, hop. Hop, You go pet the other goats while I check Kitty, okay? Okay. Good boy. Hi, goat. She's actually a very hands-on goat, like... When she's in labor, she doesn't mind people being around. Okay. All right. 
Well, Kitty was not going to let me check her. So that actually makes me think she might be getting closer. A lot of times, just before kidding, a goat will start acting funny and they'll run away from you when they used to be friendly. <laughs> and Kitty typically acts really friendly when she's in labor. So this is probably just really early stages. Um, I'm not seeing any contractions or anything. So I will be back out to check on her right after lunch to be sure she's not transitioning into active labor. So the freeze the last couple of nights has damaged some of the buds that already opened on this ornamental crab apple, but there are a lot of buds still ready to open. So our honeybees should have plenty to nectar on. We actually got the notice that our bees are coming Saturday morning, so I'm super stoked. Cannot wait and can't wait to share this adventure again with you guys. See you next time on Horse and Walks. <laughs> so you guys say? Yeah. You say please like, share, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.